Simok, I have a question for you. Okay. Don't put me on the spot. How badly has... <laughs> Let's get through this. How badly has internet censorship impacted your life? It's quite possibly one of the worst things that's ever happened to me. Mm -hmm. Particularly because I do make videos for a living. Okay, yeah, so besides the fact that we earn our living uh, through YouTube, right? Yeah. Which is completely blocked in China. How else has it affected you? It's not only affected, you know, like the whole VPN thing. We have VPNs that yeah. we use to get on the internet in China. Right. And of course, uh, that opens the internet back up to you. Not but very well, though. Not very well. They, they're slow and they go down all the time, right? So yeah. event, sometimes in China, what happens is you get used to not having the internet. Right. And you're forced to go watch some crap on Chinese video sites or, you know, not be able to go on Reddit and all this kind of stuff. And you start to realize that you're out of touch with the rest of the world. Sure. And it's pretty bad. What about you? Hey guys, I just wanted to throw out a massive disclaimer before this episode starts. And that disclaimer is to say that we have learned quite a bit after staying in Vietnam for over a month. The episode that you're about to watch is still very relevant. Uh, it covers our personal experience with using the internet in Vietnam versus in China, but this was filmed towards the beginning of our trip. So in the beginning of our trip, we hadn't you know, spoken to too many people or we hadn't had too many anecdotal pieces of evidence from locals. Um, but after getting to know some people, making some friends in Vietnam, we learned quite a bit more about the actual freedom of internet in Vietnam. So before we get into personal experience, I wanted to bring up the fact that uh, Vietnam, in fact, is one of the worst offenders of the freedom of internet. Uh, if you go on pages like freedomhouse.org or other reports that talk about what content is blocked and what happens to people that talk about things online in Vietnam, you might be quite shocked. That being said, when you do compare the two countries, Vietnam and China, China actually scores the lowest in internet freedom in the entire world, barring North Korea, considering there's no actual reports going on within North Korea. But uh, Vietnam is quite a bit freer, and this is because Although both of them block political and social content that goes against the party, uh, China actually blocks almost all social media, I should say all social media from other countries, whereas Vietnam has not really touched social media. They may observe social media and they do hire uh, military force to actually go and monitor things that people are doing on the internet, just like China does. But Vietnamese people are allowed to communicate with each other on worldwide apps using things like YouTube, Facebook, WhatsApp, all the different social media apps that people around the world use are available in Vietnam. That being said, a lot of people have been arrested fairly recently. Uh, bloggers, oftentimes uh, dissidents, people that promote religion too much, people that speak out. One of the most uh, important things that they crack down upon is Vietnamese people abroad that try to make some sort of uh, political party. Because there are so many Vietnamese people in the US and other countries, uh, they crack down on this, especially people that have influence within Vietnam. So yeah, it's apples and oranges. I mean, China and Vietnam, both very bad abusers of internet freedom, but Vietnam as of now, although it looks like it's getting quite a bit worse, is still much more free. And in my opinion, I think Winston would think the same. Social media is actually the most important thing uh, that people can use to communicate and spread ideas and open up to the rest of the world. And that's something that China just doesn't have. Okay, I'd like to just go one step ahead and say that the internet censorship has made quality of life so much worse. Okay. For instance, remember the first time I went to America for this big road trip? Right. I bought a, a Google Chromecast. Right. It was expensive. I got the, the high-end one. Uh -huh. Got back to China, plugged it into the TV, it doesn't work. Right. Then I realized that most modern devices, doesn't matter what it is, if it's an alarm clock or a Bluetooth speaker or anything, you know, that people are accustomed to these days in the West, Things like Amazon Alexa or, you know, all this stuff does not work in China. Right. Because you plug it into the internet, it tries to reach the Amazon server or it tries to reach whatever server out there and it's blocked. Right. And it sits there and it just can't do anything. So pretty much smart TVs, everything that people are used to using in the West. Right. You know, right. they rely on connecting to Netflix or right. anything like that. 
just doesn't work. So your quality of life goes back a decade because you can't right. use any of these new gadgets and Internet of Things right. um, pieces of hardware that are out there, right? Right. So <laughs> that's one thing. <laughs> that is one thing. And another thing, and yeah. this, is, this is an effect not on me, right. but on the actual populace of China. There, of course, there's a linguistical great wall that Chinese yes. people have in that it's a very different language to the international language of English. And most sure. people in China, by and large, do not speak English, right? No, most but not. there's a lot of media yeah. on the internet that can either be translated into Chinese mm -hmm. or it's from Taiwan or Hong Kong. Sure. And all of these things are not available in China to Chinese people, right? Sure. Now, what this does is actually not create a you know, a hatred for all, all things in the West. It creates an ap apathetic feeling amongst Chinese people yeah. that, well, I can't get to it, I'm not going to put in the effort, getting a VPN is illegal, yeah. cuts off an entire populace, right? So yeah. when the internet was free, I honestly think that was a symptom. We saw symptoms of the freedom of the internet when we first moved there, yeah. in that Chinese people were kind of outward looking. A day without VPN. It's like a day without us internet freedom. Gotta have my Nord. Thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this episode because what you can do with NordVPN is unblock all those websites. But more importantly, if you're not in China and you do have access to the free internet, you're still open to all kinds of vulnerabilities and things like that. So using a VPN means that your data is safe, no one can take it from you, and no one can see what you're doing online. Also, I use it to shop around for plane tickets. You can get cheaper plane deals if you hop around different countries from their very convenient list of countries to choose from. And you can have the peace of mind that your connection is not only secure, but you can actually access things in other countries that you might not be able to access, like Netflix. Say you want to use Netflix in a country that doesn't have it, or you want to see certain TV series that are blocked or not available due to copyright issues, you can actually use NordVPN to go to that country and kind of pretend like you're there and see all that content. So don't forget to use nordvpn.com slash advchina for a massive discount and one month free. Thank you. Yes. The nationalism was much less. Sure. Right? When the internet's cut off, your only source of information is what the government tells you. Sure. Right? Sure. So that stirs up controversy. It stirs up everyone going, yeah, we are the best. China's better, blah, 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 blah. Right. And they can only believe what they see, not yeah. what they seek out. Oh, sure. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is we're currently in Vietnam. Uh -huh. And all of my stuff works. Right. Google Translate works. Right. You know how useful that's been? Yeah. You know how not useful it is is when you're in China and you want to use Google Translate but you can't? Right. You know, everything works. I can check my YouTube, I can check my Facebook, I can do Instagram, Twitter, whatever I want. Right. And it's amazing how much it just changes the feel of a place. Yeah, it does. It really does. Because as you walk around on the streets here, I can whip out my phone and use Google Maps to find out where I'm going. It's all in my language. I can use Google Translate to talk to the locals. You know, all of this stuff which you take for granted, but when you're in China, you're cut off. Mm. And it affects you. It affects your mentality. As you walk around, you feel like you're unwelcome. Right. Does that make sense? It absolutely does, for sure. Let's, let's, uh, can we? No, let's not. Now, it's not all peaches and roses. No, no, uh, sure. The internet in Vietnam is heavily set. Yes, but it's like I feel like all the social media apps aren't. They are. And there is a very big reason for that. And that's in China, the government's paranoid that they'll get an outside perspective and make friends in other countries, yeah. which would prove all of the negative media and yet negative stereotypes that they portray about other countries wrong. Yeah. Through simple interaction with people, right? Sure. Whereas a country that's not huge and dom trying to dominate world power isn't that paranoid about their citizens chatting with other people, yeah. right? Yeah. They're not going to go start an uprising or something like that. Yeah. So. Yes, things are blocked, especially if they're, you know, anti-communism and stuff, BBC's blocked and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. yes, the tools for people to actually get change started, yeah. to make friends and things like this, they're all here. Absolutely. And just from a very personal level, from myself, I feel so much more comfortable in a country where I feel as if I'm not being blocked right. on purpose. Because the methods they use to block all these different services, like Google services, are malicious. Right, right, It's right. like what a hacker would do, right? Right. It's things like DNS poisoning. Right. It's things like tricking your device into going to, a, you know, somewhere it's not supposed to go. Right, for and sure. And it's very, 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 very annoying. So it's it just is. nice to be able to be somewhere where all the modern technology works. Right. You know what I mean? I agree. 
100%. So this is something I would like everybody to take into consideration if they are planning to come and live in Asia, um, is that it is much bigger than you think. Yeah. It's a much bigger factor. It will be a much bigger factor in your personal life than you think. Yeah. You know, if all of a sudden, oh no, you can't speak to your parents anymore because Skype's blocked this week or right. you know, whatever. So take that into consideration. Countries like Vietnam, Taiwan, Hong Kong, these places, it's not blocked. Right. So always put that as one of your biggest priorities when you're traveling overseas, internet freedom. People have, you know, just to, this is my final point. People have asked me a million times and yeah. us, how do you get over homesickness? And the most important thing is that you have the ability to communicate with people back home when you want, right? Sure. When you cut that off, that's when things get really sad. You know? Yeah, so. and this is another thing that people don't seem to understand is that even if it isn't, thank you, even if it isn't blocked, it's still filtered. Right. So all the services like Skype, for instance, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But because everything has to go through this chokehold of the Great Firewall, right. it's too slow. Right. So it's a very bad connection. And right. it's very difficult to have a proper conversation. Right. It doesn't work well, right? So even if it works, it doesn't work well. Yeah. So uh, yeah, is there anything you'd like to tell everyone before we sign off? Um, whether you like getting hit by rogue motorcycles or not. No. You can go. Um, <laughs> whether you approve of government censorship because you think it's a good way to control the people and keep harmony in society or not. Actually, I wouldn't appreciate it if you, if you thought that. No. Um, let us know what you think down below. It's actually a pretty touchy subject these days with yeah. people kind of congratulating China and kind of getting a hold on their citizens and like straightening everything out. A yeah. lot of these people are, have that opinion. Let me know what you think down below. If you liked the video, give it a like and uh, subscribe if you want to see more. Yeah, absolutely. And whether or not you enjoy free internet or not, <laughs> right? we love you all the same. Um, and just don't forget this huge double standard of uh, the uh, <laughs> Chinese government using Western free internet right. to promote their own goals and stuff. But you're not allowed to do anything within China. Remember, there is right. always that. Just keep that in mind. Right. Uh, anyway, we love you all the same. And as always, you know the drill. Stay awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Don't forget, every single Monday at 1 p.m. EST, you can watch ADV China. You can watch me every single Wednesday at 1 p.m. EST, Lao 86. And right below that, you can watch Serpents Today, just in time for a beer on Friday at 1 p.m. EST.